up? Welcome to the Couple on Fire podcast. Hey, today is our one year anniversary. That's right. Crowd cheering. Woo! You should have put that <laughs> on there. So you could have did clapping or something. <laughs> Just clap ourselves. So anyway, today we want to talk about the topic of why did you start? Yeah, because we're going to talk about why we started. Yeah. And that's coming up right now. Right. So, of course, we are mostly excited, not just about our one-year anniversary, but about our event that's coming up April 10th. If you haven't had an opportunity yet to register for it, it is perfectlyblendedevent.com. Uh, if you're going to be in person, we do have limited seating, so you're going to want to make sure you grab your tickets today. And okay. I'm most excited that Jay and Laura are coming and being a part of it. Yeah, they're awesome. We actually had an opportunity where we were able to go to one of their ultimate date nights this last Friday, and they were doing a kind of a live recording and there was actually an audience and everything, even via COVID. It was awesome. And uh, it was just a really great time. It was. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So today's episode, right? Today's awesome episode is uh, something that we want to talk about when it comes to why do we start? Why do you start? Why do you bother to start? You know, and it's it, as time goes on, we start to ask ourselves these questions about all different types of things that in our lives, right? Why didn't I start or why did I bother starting this? Like, Sometimes we're doing things and it feels like it's just dragging on and on and on and we're not getting any traction. And at other times we're like, man, if I could have only started this a year ago or five years ago or a month ago, you know, I think that's a popular question that we seem to always ask ourselves. So today we really want to dive a little bit deeper into that. Yes. Do you have anything you want to talk about before we get started? No. No? No, I'm good. Okay. She's like, I'm good. All right. So the first thing, number one thing that we want to talk about today is... You got to just start. Yeah. And it's so funny because a lot of people, if you would have asked me five or six years ago and like, what do you mean? Like, what's the first step? Why, how to just start? And it's so weird because I don't know, like the just start is for different for everybody. You just have to start something. Josh and I knew that we wanted to be doing something together in ministry to spread God's word. And Amen. we started thinking about, okay, we're both recovering alcoholics. Let's just start reaching out to all the churches in Genesee County, even in Saginaw, and just send them messages, email them, call them, leave them messages, ask if they'd be willing to have us, even though they don't know us. We, sent, we made up a little intro with a picture of us and just started sending it out to people saying, hey, uh, would you be willing to let us come and speak to anyone, do a class, you know, that anyone in your church that may be struggling. Then even before that, though, this is how just starting God takes it and molds it. So I love the Bible verse that says, uh, man plans his man makes his plans, but God directs his steps. So it's like Josh and I knew we wanted to be doing something together. So that's where it just started is just a small little seed that we wanted to be doing something together. And what we were like, well, what do we like to do? Well, both of us really like organization. So we were like, okay, we're going to start a business called Organized Perfection. And we went to business meetings and we started advertising for it, got magnets for our car and business <laughs> cards, went on a couple sales calls that we got because we really figured out how to make small spaces fit and work and look really neat and clean uh, because we had six people living in a very small apartment for three years and everyone would come over and be like, you guys can't even tell that you guys have so many people living in here. And it's just because of the way we organize it. So we started out there and then Josh really likes to cook. So then we were like, okay, maybe we start our own restaurant or food truck of some sort. And Josh figured out how to make wood fired pizzas and mozzarella and cheese from scratch and dough from scratch and his pizzas he was making got pizza boxes we were taking them to people people loved them they were good if you've never had josh's pizzas you're missing out okay 
Uh, and there was something else. Oh, Faith Love Serve. Then we tried to start Faith Love Serve where we're like, okay, no, we really want to be doing something that's God related. He is the most important thing. We yep. want to be bringing people to God. So then we tried to start Faith Love Serve and just doing things around the community and start a movement that now it's branched into this podcast. Yeah. You know, the podcast. It, then we tried to do the recovery, like reaching out to all the other churches that we knew. Didn't get any traction on that. Then it's turned into this podcast, which we're not quitting this. Okay. <laughs> like we, we didn't really quit the other stuff though, either. You know, no, and I think it's, it's really important. Like, you know, a lot of times we don't understand what God's plan is for our lives. And when we continue to follow him, we will change directions so many times. The point is, is if we don't keep just continue to start and start and start yeah. and we allow ourselves to get, you know, um, um, uh, what, what's the word where we're, uh, I don't know, distracted maybe, you know, mm -hmm. from things. And we allow, you know, ourselves to be distracted from what God's purpose is in our lives. And the more that Christy and I grew, the more that we started to grow yeah. into our purpose and understand the direction that God really has intended for our lives. But we wouldn't be to the point to where we're at now, to where we're so confident in exactly what God wants from us and what's he, what he's asking us to do if we didn't continuously start. Like, we got to start. And we have so much fun now. It is so much fun. But it can get discouraging. So, Josh. Discouraging was the word I was looking for. We really thought, like, this one time, this guy that Josh used to know years ago, like, we were praying, like, God, please just tell us what you want us to do, all this thing. And this guy that Josh used to know years ago, I forgot about Went to this. to school with him. Randomly reached out to him and said he has a whole cause. It's called called Christians for a Cause. It was already an up-and-running business that they were, you know, it was... And he wanted Josh to come be on his board and board of directors and help him with his website and help him with the marketing. Yep. And we did that for, well, Josh did that. And he brought me along a little bit for a few months. And we really thought that was like, okay, this is it. This is something. And then it just fills it out. And then we were like, yeah, why did God bring that in if it wasn't it? So you will question, but you have to just keep pivoting pivot 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 <laughs> yeah so it's funny so you know we always talk about change and we expect change in our lives but we're not willing to do the things that are necessary to have the change and the only way the things develop in our lives the only way that we're able to see the things that do change in our lives is by starting and if we don't start we'll never see them and we allow so many things and we're going to talk about some more stuff but yeah we allow so many things to come in our way of that Right. We can sit and talk about the five or six things that we've done over the last 10 years. And most people or even a lot of people, I wouldn't say most people, but some people would be embarrassed to admit like, oh, well, apparently you guys just, you know, never follow through with anything. Oh, we followed through on everything that we've done. But we also understood like, OK, God's calling on our life. We need to follow that mm -hmm. and we need to pay attention to that in our lives. And as long as we keep doing that continuously, you know, someone says, you know, uh, are you going to move to Florida or Texas or whatever? Yeah, that's what I want to do. But I'm telling you that if God doesn't want me to do that, I'm not going to do that. Right. That's what Josh wants. That's what Christy wants. Mm -hmm. But I'm, we're also very obedient to what Christ wants in our lives. And we try to stay very, very attuned to that and stay with the directions with that. And as long as we continuously stay on the, we're, we're going to start, and we're just going to head in this direction until God points us in a different direction, then we can understand and have a better understanding of what our purpose is. Well, and the more that we keep starting and we keep going, we are supposed to be clay in the potter's hands. Yep. Yep. And the more that we just keep like, okay, we know that he wants us to be everything that we do, do with excellence and point people towards him. And we feel like we, God put something on our heart. Okay, let's try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yep. And allow yourself to feel those feelings of discouragement, but don't let that make it to where you never start again, something else. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So just start, do the next right thing. If you yeah. ha feel like God is telling you to I have a friend who loves death. I know it's really weird, but she likes dead people and she wants to work in a funeral home. And it's like, okay, if you feel like that's a gift that God has given you, then what's your next step in yeah. order to get to that? And if it's to take some classes or even get into a community of people that are already in there or ask if you could go visit a funeral home and talk to people there, ask them what the best schools are that you could go to, any help that you could get, you know, they know the inside information. That would be the next thing. Just go. Pursue it. Pursue. Hit the number two. Because okay. you wanted to push the button earlier. And I'm like, don't push it. Ooh, the that is really soft. It's squishy. You have to push it, though. There you go. Okay. Time passes anyway. 
See, I don't understand how when I hit your arm, it pushed it that hard. Well, mm. you hit some your things finger. are just not meant to be understood. Oh, it was Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. See, Sarah is the one that likes dead people. Sorry, that's just something <laughs> I thought about because not, that's a un- very unique thing. It so is. It's just something. So it time is. passes anyway, so why not? This is something that, especially when you get in your mid-30s, probably more prevalent when you really reach 40, uh, that you start thinking about, like... If you wanted a degree now and you're just like, there's no point by the time I finish this degree, I'm going to be 45 years old. Or by the time I finish this degree, I'm going to be 50 years old. And what we really need to remind ourselves is in four years, you're going to be that age anyway. So why not be that age and have that degree that you want or have started that business or that podcast that you want to do or start that? um, uh, What am I thinking of? I don't know. But something to raise money, charity, charity. Start foundation that, or yeah, charity. Yeah. foundation or charity yeah. that you want to do. Do those things because in that four years, when that four years hits, I guarantee you, you will tell yourself, man, if I would have just started four years ago, I would have that now. And I wish I would have done it. And I don't think we give ourselves enough credit mm. to how much life we have left and how much impact that we can still make. You know, I, I know I don't want to get too heavy on this, but I tried to commit suicide when I was 16 because of how hard my life had been up until that point. And I really thought that was all my life was. And that's when I was 16 and I'm 42 now. And it's like so much life has been lived between 16 and 42. Mm. And now I think my life, like I'm 42, what is there really left? I could live another 40 years so we don't give ourselves enough credit for how much time we have left. If you are 50 and you want to go back to school, go back to school. Do it. It, it's, it's time's passing anyway. Yes. Yeah. It's passing anyway. It's one of, been one of my, the, my most favorite thing to tell people when, you know, they come to me and their, their life feels like it's just at the end of the rope. And I tell them, you know, just keep coming back. You know, we talk about celebrate recovery. We just talk about keep coming back, keep coming back. And Mm -hmm. I said, the one thing that you can always guarantee is this time's going to pass anyway, but imagine where you'll be. If you stick with this a year from now, you'll be able to look back and say, wow, am I so glad that I started this a year ago? And we, we, and then we, we don't have to wonder why did I start? Mm -mm. You know, a lot of times we question the journey. Like that's very, very easy to do. Christine, I do that constantly, right? Why is this happening? Why are you putting us in this direction, Lord? Why is this the direction you're leading us? You know, we question it, but it doesn't mean that we don't stop. And we know that the time's going to pass anyway. You know, we both come from backgrounds of a lot of regret in certain areas that we've had to learn how to overcome, you know, and we say to ourselves like, we know this time's going to pass anyway. We don't want to waste another moment. So Mm -hmm. the time's going to pass anyway. I love that she uses the analogy of school, right? So a few years ago, Christy and I were talking and she's like, you know what? She goes, I think I want to go back to school. And I'm like, to finish her master's program. And I said, are you sure? I mean, you're working full time, more than full time. And she's like, yeah, you know, I really think that's something I really want to finish. And that spurred it right there. It said, okay, that's what I want to do. She looked into it. And as soon as she looked into it, she's like, okay, I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to sign up, right? And that was like a couple years ago. And she's taken one class at a time, right? She's managed to not stop, but continuously do one class at a time. Most people would be like, I'm not doing that if I can't take five, okay? Because I'm a lot like that. I'm like, well, if I can't take them all right now, then I'm not going to bother. And she's not like that. But guess what? She's got like five weeks left, four weeks left, six weeks left. And then Bye. she's done. I'm done. And now she can <laughs> say when she's done, she can look back and say, man, the time was going to pass anyway. And I'm so glad and proud of herself. I mean, she's going to be so proud of herself. And I'm going to be proud of her. And other people are going to be proud of her. But the time passed anyway. So why not get something from it? Right? It's, yeah, I'm going to get emotional talking about it. Because it's it's been hard. Um, we, You know, when I... Yeah, I get three weeks breaks between classes and my classes are 10 weeks long. And yeah. man, when I'm off on them three weeks, I already feel busy. Yeah. So it's like, you know, we have our podcast that we love to do, but we still have to prepare for it and put thought into it and really want to make an impact and be purposeful in what we're doing. And we have Celebrate Recovery and we have four kids <laughs> and a son-in-law and we are huge, hugely involved in our church and I'm on the worship team and we're on the welcome team and Josh works at our church. 
Like we have a lot of stuff. We have our life group. We love our life group and we try to give back to the community within our life group and do things together. Mm -hmm. I like to go out still and make an impact with my friends and give godly advice and go to breakfast. And so then when you add school to that too, it's just like, okay, I'm stretched really thin right now, but I've made it and I have five weeks left. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but it's really hard. It's really hard to feel like you're doing everything with excellence when you're doing so much. Yeah, but the time passed anyway. Exactly. And that's that's the glorious thing. Nobody says... I didn't die, but did you die? But, <laughs> but did you die? <laughs> it's really funny because, um, you know, I've heard the name Roger Bannister so many times, and maybe you have as well. He's the guy, the very first guy that's ever broke the four-minute mile. And this mm. was a long, long, long time ago. I think it was in the 50s or 60s yeah. when he did this. But the amazing thing about it is that he broke the four-minute mile, and then after he broke the four-minute mile, it was broke like another, like, 20 times that year, right? So it lets people know that it's possible. And that's what's awesome about our personal story is oh, the yeah. time passes anyway. We started anyway. And we think a lot of times that we're going through all of this stuff, like this anguish, like she's talking about the struggle. But the thing is, is God shines the light all the way through that struggle. And if we continue through it and the time's passing anyway, and when we get to the finish line of whatever that thing is, it impacts so many other people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're actually casting a light for Christ when we really do put our head down and really commit to something and say, hey, why did I start this? I started it because I'm not the only one being impacted by it. Mm -hmm. You know, Christy was such an inspiration about going back for a master's degree. I'm like, well, if you're going back to school, I'm going back to school, right? So it's like, hey, we're going to do this. And I don't work as much as she does, you know? So me going to school is a lot easier to go back to school than it is for her. But it's but it it influenced me in such a positive way that, you know, it isn't just for her. It's for me as well. So that's the way Christ works in it. So when we have to question ourselves about why we started, it's not always just for us. That grind isn't always just for us. It's for others as well. No, and I want you to go up and show what... Um, I'm going up? Right there. No, keep going. Right there. See? Like this? Yeah, Christy, you would be proud. I did start working on my default student loans to go back. Yeah, she's the person that likes dead people. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. she is. So she needs to work in a mortuary she is. or something. Yeah. No, okay. it's good, and not very many people are comfortable with that. That's awesome. They're not, and we all serve a purpose in one way or the other, and yeah. not everyone is cut the same. So, All right, so the third thing is, what's the world say? The world sometimes, we believe, tells us we're not qualified. Yeah. So I love that one because when you, it's so funny, like when you talk to people, like we want to be, you know, blended Christian family marriage coaches, you know, we want to do seminars and we want to do those things. And it's so funny because some people will be like, what, what makes you qualified to do that? you know, and, or the world itself would ask you that question. Like, why would you be qualified to do that? And you have to know that your experience makes you qualified, that the calling on your heart makes you qualified and the passion that you have for it. And you're like, no, I have personal experience in this and I know where the gaps are. I know where there needs to be a bridge you know, created so people can be comfortable. And if I have to be the first person to blaze the pathway for something for blended families or Christian families, I know that Josh feels the same way, then we want to do that. So other people can be more comfortable or more awkward, you know, get over the awkward phases. And right now there is just such limited things that you can find as a Christian blended family. I mean, you can find Ron Deal, who has been in the space for a long time. He is a counselor. He has lots of wisdom. He's counseled many, 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 uh, blended families. He knows a lot of blended families and actually brings biblical principles into it, but really that's it. That's the most. And if we can add to the space, you know, some personal experience and to create a uh, greater cause and greater awareness to it, that's all that we want to do in community. Yeah. Yeah. And I really believe this is something that really keeps me going, right? There is people that are always going to ask you like, yeah, but why do you think you're an expert? I'm not an expert. Yeah. And the one thing that I do know about Christ is Christ doesn't call the, he doesn't call the qualified, right? He calls the broken and he no qualifies way. us as, as, as we follow, you know? And so I think to myself, and this has always worked in my recovery is that I just need to be one step further along than the person behind me. And it is my responsibility to turn around and offer help. 
in any way that I can. That doesn't make me better than that person. Okay, it means that it's my it, it's my right to 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 look back and say, hey, this is the experiences I've had, and I'm speaking up. But that's not what we believe the world says, and sometimes that's not what the world tells us. It says, who do you think you are that you should be writing a book? You don't have enough degrees, and you're not old enough, and you're not all these things. It's like, okay, well, that book isn't meant for you then. You know, maybe this book is meant for somebody else. Like the book isn't about me and about what I'm supposed to get out of it, but it's about what God's trying to do through us. And we don't have to be qualified to do that. And it's real easy to get caught up in thinking, you know, I'm not going to start this because I'm not qualified to start it. Okay, there's a difference between giving really bad advice to somebody, right? Than it is about sharing your testimony or the sharing what God has done in your life. And everybody's qualified for that. If you have something that's happened in your life where God has brought you through it, it is our obligation to turn around and say, hey, blended families, this is what we've experienced. We're not experts, okay? We're going through it today still, but we've learned some stuff along the way, and this is what the things that have worked. And that right there is the way God shines through us and qualifies us through it. Yeah, and the thing about it is, too, is that we know two things, right? We know we want to do something together, us, and we know that we want to be shining a light for God. So Amen. this is the direction that we're going to be going and we're not against pivoting if God asks us to pivot. Sweet. And that is something that you need to be willing to do. God puts a dream on your heart. Our human brains may think this is the dream. You start in that direction. You have to be willing to pivot though, because just because God put a dream in your heart, he wants us all to be able to have faith, to step out, be brave, bring people to Christ do it through what he you feel like he's called you to do. Mm. And as long as you're going in that direction, he'll pivot you. You just have to be willing. Don't get prideful and be hanging on to that one dream that you thought it was. You have to allow God to take control a little bit and while you're doing the work. If we would have gotten prideful and said, no, this organized perfection thing is what he wants us to be doing. We're just going to keep going in this direction when we had all the science telling us, okay, no, this showed you how to start a business. Had you guys do the research, yep. you got wisdom out of it. It's time to pivot. We have to pivot. It's just, it's just what you have to do. So you can't let the world, you can't be afraid that the world sees you starting, starting, starting what looks to them. Like you're starting all these different things when really God is just molding you and you're learning something from each experience only to become the great creation and the powerful purpose that he has for you in the end. Yeah. And I see that as like Noah to me. That's what I was thinking when you were talking, yeah. when he was building the boat. Yeah. He's building the boat and he was old. He was old <laughs> when, he, when he started building this boat. Right. And he was well into his hundreds and stuff by the time it was built. But he understood like, Hey, I've lived this whole life already. Right. I'm done. It's like, no, you're never done. Yeah. You have to be willing to pivot. And sometimes you have to be willing to say the world just doesn't understand what God's calling on my heart. Not everyone is going to understand. And I'm telling you, some stuff that you do, depending on where you live in the world, you know, Christy and I do a podcast, right? We live basically in Flint, Michigan, right? People don't just do podcasts in Flint, Michigan. They don't. Like, it's a very odd thing out. But if, I'm, but if we lived in Los Angeles or New York, I bet everybody that lives there, every other house is does this. So it doesn't matter. Like, we, we can't allow everybody else to dictate on whether we're qualified to do something or not. That's just not how it works. Mm -mm. We can't listen to that. We have to listen to the calling of what Christ puts on us and then be willing and obedient to follow it. And that's not always easy. No. It's hard. It is hard. Yeah. So that's number three. Number four. Number four. Ooh, the imposter syndrome. Yeah, this one's my favorite. So... <laughs> Um, but it kind of goes in what I want to talk about with number three, like don't let the world tell you you're not qualified. And then imposter syndrome too. Imposter syndrome is what you tell yourself. So don't think still to this day, um, you're doing something like today is our one year anniversary. And I still like, if someone's like, well, what do you have going on? Or what do you do? And I'm like, Oh, Tuesdays, I can't, you know, I can't work over today or I can't do this today because you know, my husband and I, we have a podcast. I still, when I say that to some people feel stupid. When I say it, because some people's reactions are like, oh, you have a podcast, you know, like, okay, type of thing. And I, it makes me feel stupid sometimes because I'm like, well, then they, sometimes they want to know more about it. Sometimes they don't. But in my brain, I, if I actually sat back and was like, oh yeah, Josh and I have a podcast. I sometimes will start thinking like, who, who do you think you are? And you're not a Seth. Well, who is it? Seth Rogen that has like the, no, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan. 
Seth Rogen's an actor. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not him. Joe I'm, Rogan has like the most popular podcast on the, on the planet. And like Chris Swanson created a podcast so cool with that guy that gives free hugs. Yeah, and the it's Black called and Blue. Black and Blue. I mean, those are the types of people you think. You know, Dave and Rachel Hollis. Yes, of course they have podcasts. Oprah, if she started a podcast, of course. You know, and it's like, oh, little Christy and Josh are starting yeah. a podcast. But what we wanted to do is, okay, we want to do something together. That isn't coming to, to fruition right now, but we want to do something together and be able to spread encouragement in God's love and life to people. What can we do? And Josh, being the techie person he is, he's like, I think we should do a podcast. And I'm like, no, no. And then I'm like, we should do a video one. And she was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, when we first started, and he, he he should probably show you guys some of the bloopers, okay? Because the camera would be rolling. So if we did get it, he could at least have it. And we wouldn't have to redo it because I would start freezing up and I'd be like, okay, all right. All right. Like <laughs> that was funny. I love Casey. <laughs> and then we were doing pre-recorded ones. So then I, I kind of got comfortable with it because if, you know, I did something stupid, like bang his arm and the thing start, he, <laughs> you know, he could crop it and splice it together and do his little techie magic. Then he's like, babe, I've done a lot of research and we need to go live. And I'm like, no. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. And the day, the night, the very first night of our first podcast, we were set to go live. We got in a fight like 10 minutes before we started because I'm like, I don't know why you're making me do this. I am so nervous. I hate it. I never agreed to this. And he's just like, what do you want me to do? It's already it's gone. too late now. But a lot of that stemmed from imposter syndrome because yeah. we have such negative thoughts to ourselves. The way we talk to ourselves, we would never talk to our friends or our loved ones like that. Never. I mean, we tell ourselves like, no one's going to want to hear what you have to say. Like no one, no one's going to want to hear you sing up on that stage. You're not mm. Beyonce. Like, who do you think you are? Don't act like you're confident up there. You don't sound good. You know, it's just that goes through my head when I'm singing, sure. at, you know, on Sundays. And it's that is the negative thoughts. You can't let your imposter syndrome stifle the message that you have because someone needs to hear it. Someone does. And no matter what that is, if it's a podcast, if it's singing, if it's writing a book, if yeah. it's doing a blog, if it's becoming a doula. We had a friend that had a couple really bad births or tra tra not tragic, um, difficult, though. traumatizing births. Yeah. And she started becoming a doula because of her own experience to help other mothers get through that it's it's so important our life experiences will show us where god wants us to go imposter syndrome is probably the biggest thing that i personally struggle with that's okay it's it's but it is though it's something that i struggle with currently it's hard it's hard for me to share the things that uh, i feel like god has placed on our hearts with other people because i'm always afraid someone's going to think who do you think you are who do you think that you are? You know, and I just have to constantly remind myself, like, no, if this is what God has for me, my obedience is what's most important, not other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying everybody does think that about what whatever it is that I'm doing or saying or whatever, but it doesn't mean that I don't feel that way. So we have a whiteboard that sits out by our desks that are, is in our front room, and I have imposter syndrome written on the very, very top. And then it'll get me emotional because I have a hard time with it. So I have to constantly look at it to constantly remind me like, no, like this is what God's intending for you. You just keep marching in that direction. It's not about how we feel about it, right? It's not about how we feel about ourselves when it comes to that, because our identity doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from him. And we have to constantly, constantly remind ourselves like, it doesn't mean that I'm trying to be better than somebody else. And it doesn't mean that I'm just trying to be something special, right? I'm just trying to be obedient. And that is a hard thing to do. So imposter syndrome is real and it keeps people back. I heard somebody say something one time. It says that some of the greatest inventions, the cure to cancer and the most amazing books ever written are in the grave. And that's because people allowed their self-talk to stop them from doing really what God has created them to do. And we do that by just stopping ourselves with our own self-talk by imposter syndrome. In the book, The Traveler's Gift talks about that. So if you guys haven't read The Traveler's Gift, you need to read it. Even listen to it on Audible. But the thing about it is it's catch-22, right? That's why community is so important. So don't let the world tell you you're not qualified in imposter syndrome. She's like, you better than Beyonce, Fran. <laughs> That's See, why... She says you sound great, too. 
that is why, though, you need a community of people for this reason right here. You see on the screen. Yeah. Because the some of the world will tell you that you suck. They will. And your head sometimes will tell you that you suck. And you need a community of people to be real with you and to encourage you when you get there. And let's be honest. The world sometimes, like, if Josh started talking about how his imposter syndrome, the only way that God can cure something is if we get it out in the light. Don't keep, don't keep stuff in our head. But the world, sometimes we tip put out these nasty thoughts that we think about ourselves, which is already making us vulnerable. Some people out there will be like, you're just fishing for compliments. You already know you're good. You, you just want people yeah. to tell you that you're good. And it's like, okay, I'm putting myself out there now to be vulnerable and people are still being hurtful. So then we just keep the thoughts in our head. So, your community and your circle is so vitally important to protect. You don't have people in it that aren't going to protect your dream with you. And you get rid of people that will not encourage you when you need it. If they tell you you're fishing for compliments or not, um, you just want attention or yeah. things like that. They're not part of your circle because the people that really know, you know, when Josh is sitting here getting teary eyed, talking about his imposter syndrome, even though he seems confident when he's speaking and doing all of these things, they'll know he's for real and they will give him the encouragement that he needs. And that's what you need. Imposter syndrome is real and you need community to help you with that. You do. And, um, embrace the suck, yeah, embrace the suck Mark. That's right. And that's, that's so true. It's so true. You know, it's, um, Oh my gosh, I was going to say something and now okay. I can't. That's okay. I can't remember what I was going to say. But if I think about it, I'll circle back to it. We're talking about community. Oh, thank you. See, he sprung it. So, and that's a big thing of like this whole blended family thing that Christy and I are trying to do, right? We know for a fact, because we understand that so many people suffer in silence when it comes to something like a blended family as a Christian, right? It's an embarrassment already and you already feel like a second class christian so having a community of people that you feel comfortable opening up in front of that you know that aren't going to backlash you you know that's where like christy's like you need to be able to get it out but be able to have a safe community to do it that's a big thing like our biggest goal in all of this is just to create a good strong healthy community that's it because we know how important it is just being part of celebrate recovery i mean there's people on here right now that are part of it sarah's part i mean it's just awesome to have a community of people mm -hmm. that is just so strong and have your back and understand where you've been and then you can you you can you can let out the, the concerns you have with this imposter syndrome and people will say hey you know you're not what you think that you are you know god i see you and god sees you so much different and you get that support that you so desperately need and a lot of people they have to switch communities because the community there and now won't do that they're just mean they're just mean yeah and so like even us for this event that we're doing on april 10th it's it starts to be like oh, i don't want to ask somebody if they'll hang our poster in their church yeah. i don't want to ask somebody yeah. if they'll advertise it for us or like share it for us because we don't want them to think that you know, we're prideful and it's like, you have to get over that. You have to just do it. You do like we have posters made up. They're pretty cool looking posters. And if you are part of a business and you have the authority to hang up a poster, contact us because we want you to hang up a poster to advertise for for a long time. Okay. And I'm just being transparent for a long time. I'm like, who does Chris Swanson think he is? Like, who does he think he is? Right. Getting up there, you know, doing all this like super high energy stuff. Like who's he think he is, but let's just be real. He's, he's, he's starting. He knows why he started. You, yeah. He doesn't, nobody questions it. And when I got to meet him and get to know him, it is who he is. it's who he is. <laughs> He's genuinely that. Yeah. And God is using him, right? And it's easy for a guy like me to sit and point fingers at him. But in all reality, it's just because I'm really jealous to a certain degree. Like, yeah. hey, he's making an impact and he doesn't yeah. care what everybody else thinks. That's what we all have to embrace. Like, just move for Christ. Move. Just move and don't worry. You don't have to wonder why you're constantly starting something. God will keep showing you uh, in the proof of exactly what what it is that, that's going on. So, all right. So that's number four. So let's move on to the very last point, number five. Let me click on it. And then we have a couple pictures we want to show you guys that Christy found that we think are really powerful. So, number five, can't please everyone. Are you looking something up? Yeah. Okay. Do you that's want me okay. to talk? Do you want to just keep no. looking? Okay. So can't you can't please everyone, right? So stop trying to. No, and that's very hard for someone like me because I'm a codependent and even though I will say stuff like, um, you know, your circle of influence, you may not be able to have someone in it any longer as close. Like you don't have to be rude to the person or hate them, 
but they might not be able to part, be part of your 12 anymore. I say 12 Gosh. because God had 12 disciples, right? So it went out of focus all of a sudden. It, oh, because my cup, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um. So stop trying to please everybody, though. And yeah. the thing about it is, is that you're, him and I have had many talks about this. He's braver than I am when it comes to talking about topics. And I'm like, well, it might offend someone or it might offend this person or it might offend that person. And he's like, babe, that just needs to get talked about. It's a hot topic right now. And that's something that has taken me a while to embrace because if we do a heart check and we know that we're not doing it to purposely be malicious to a specific group of people Mm -hmm. and we're sticking with godly biblical principles, we are going to not be able to please everybody because... Jesus couldn't please everybody for one and he was perfect and knew the word. He was the word. So it's, it's very hard because you never want to get a bad review. You know, we have a podcast. If we get a bad review, it hurts. You know, it's kind of like, you know, why, why didn't we wish I'm a, I'm a good, healthy confrontational person. I wish I could call the person and be like, why did you not like it? Like what offended you or what didn't you like about it? Like, I want to talk things out. I want to talk. Set your cat on fire for doing it no no i'm just kidding i like to talk things out i want to talk things out i want to talk everything out i think everything's fixable yeah you know i agree with that and no matter what even if two people decide to part ways at the end they can at least have a deeper understanding and empathy for one another in doing so and it not be hurt feelings or hard um bitterness towards each other when you do part and it's just the way I feel. I mean, be naive, but I think that is true. So what I was looking up to, let me talk about this and then bring that up. Okay. Okay. So I think what I did, (laughs) I did see it. So I think it's important to think of karate kid and Mr. Miyagi. Okay. And I really think this is funny, but it's an amazing point is we tell he talks about the grape, right? And if you stay in the middle, if you don't choose the side of the road and you stay in the middle, you're, you become a squished grape. And that's because we can't please everybody. We can't. And, and I know for a fact, there's so many people that I know personally that are constantly trying to please everybody and they just end up making more enemies. They make everybody an enemy because it's like you told me this one day and then you told this person this other day, which is exactly the opposite of what you told me. And it's because they're just constantly trying to please people. And if we live our lives trying to please everybody, we never actually start. We never actually start anything brave. We never really start anything that's going to make a difference. You're not going to please everybody. There is no such thing as perfection in our actions that we do. So we have to just start. Like, like it's so important that we, we, we just stomp that out and we stop trying to please every single person that there is. Now, we don't want to go out and try making enemies with every single person that there is, but it's important that we don't act like the grape in the middle of the road. Like, we're going to get squished out. We just are. So pick something, pick your direction and go boldly in that direction with it and start. And then, and then if something, I don't know about you guys, but a big thing for me is that what if I start in this direction and then I find out I'm wrong, then what? Then you're wrong. Who cares? Then you're wrong. Yes. Who cares? That's why being a high level communicator, that's why it's so important to say, Hey, I was wrong. Okay. I tried though. And now that I know that's the wrong way, I know which way is the right way. And that's why it's so important that we, we stop trying to please everybody because you never actually take real action if you don't. And that's why your community is so important because you will have people waiting, waiting for you to fail so they can point at you, laugh at you, talk behind your back, whatever. It's going to happen. People are going to talk no matter what. It's true. So that's why your community is so important in those instances though, because then when you are wrong, you can have the courage, more courage to say, yeah, I, I, I was wrong. And then just pivot and go in a different direction. And the people that are talking about your behind your back, leave them in the back, like turn away from them and go somewhere else. Nice. So the quote that I, now Brene, I was trying to find Brene Brown's quote because Brene Brown has an awesome quote too, about people. If you're not gonna be in the arena with me, then I don't need to hear. I was trying to find that quote, but I couldn't find it, but her quote stemmed from this quote, which is very good. And it's by Theodore Roosevelt. And it says, I actually have this poster hanging up in my office at work. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. 
who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, Mm. so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. And that was Theodore Roosevelt. And I will start crying at that quote because... That quote to me is so good. I got it's goosebumps so powerful. reading it. We allow we allow the trolls of the world to dictate whether we are supposed to be doing something or whether it's right or wrong. And that is so easy to allow that to happen in our lives. But, mm. but don't take the advice from somebody that if they're not in the middle of it with you or they're not out pushing the limits as well. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to we have to start anyway. Why do we start? Why? It's our one year anniversary and we can sit and pick apart every week about while wow, there's only 20 people that watch it this week. There was only five people that watched our podcast. We could do that, but who cares? <laughs> we, we don't do it for everybody. We do it because it's something we want to do and we enjoy doing it. We absolutely love doing it. It's like our highlight of the entire week. One of our highlights because we love to do it. You know, it's not about, you know, being on the biggest stage in America or the world. We, it, it's not what's important. The important thing is, is we started something a year ago and the year is now and we're here and the next year and then the next year and the next year, we'll keep pushing, you know, and, and we can be proud of that. You know, Mm -hmm. we are proud that this is our one year anniversary, no matter what it is. God's trying to teach us something internally and we're grateful for the fruit of that. Well, and we can't get caught up in our feelings because if we would have, yeah, I say that a lot. New level, new devil. Yeah. And when we get caught up in thinking if I would have looked back, let's start over. So if I would have looked back and now and then looked and said, Oh man, if we would have kept going on our podcast today would have been our one year anniversary. Why didn't you guys keep going? Oh, after six months, we only had one or two people that were watching it. So we just quit six months. Really? I mean, are you giving it five years, four years Mm. or if you truly loved it and wanted to do it and thought that it was, you know, God was calling you to do it. Six months is all you get. Like we can't get caught up in the feelings. We, we do something. We are such a society of, we take a pill to lose 50 pounds. You know, Mm -hmm. I work, get done doing my first workout, walk in the bathroom, look in the mirror and expect some of my fat rolls to be gone. (laughs) I mean, let's just be honest. It's like, I work so hard and just sweat for 25 minutes straight. (laughs) I should have some fat that fell off my body. I mean, it's just the way that we think. And one of these pictures that's God, that God's going to show it's Josh. His name's Josh. Um, that Josh is going to show that, um, I found, I kept it in my phone because it was specifically about podcasts and yes, that's Thank it. you, Mark, thanks, for looking Mark. that up. That's it. You can always count on you to do that, yes. buddy. We really do appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's, I found it and I've kept it in my phone because it was specifically about podcasts and I text it to Josh as soon as I found it Oop. and it's like, sorry, that's the wrong one. There it is. Yeah. So that was day one. And then thanks, yeah. Tessa. Yeah, and if you look you. at the last graph, part of the graph, that's day 768. Okay. So that's like two years. Yeah. So I'm starting a podcast day one. Yeah. And then you say, where's all my fans? <laughs> I have to do this every week. My guest canceled, which we've had happen a yeah, couple times, a times now. Yeah. No one is listening. I'll just pod fade. My guest shared the episode. Woo-hoo! And then you're like, is my mic even on? Wait, consistency is working. So it's like, they like me. They really like me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so you have to, I really liked that because after six months, seven months, eight months, you know, and you get like one person and yeah. you question, like, should we be doing this? But then I think, like I said, that's how stupid it sounds when you say it out loud. Yeah. Six months. You only gave it six months. You only gave it one year. Josh tells people at Celebrate Recovery, you need to come for at least one year before you decide. And if you got a passion and want to start something, you need to be ready for the long haul. You need to tell yourself, I have to do this for at least a year. Okay. And then once that year comes, tell yourself, I have to do it for at least one more year. 
And you have to do that to keep yourself going. I agree. There's one other picture that you have on here. I want to show that real quick somewhere. Yeah. Where's that? Where's that? Um, it's not it's that one. It's the 80-20. Is it this one? Yeah, it's right here. 98-2, I mean. Yeah, yeah. the 2% mindset. 2% going for your dreams, confidence, exploring new things, choosing happiness, fulfillment. That's all the 2% of the population, right? Embracing the unknown, excitement, liking change. Mm -hmm. And then 98% of the population being in liked the by everyone else. Yep. Insecure, surviving, comfort zone, fear, just getting by, a dull life, play it safe. That's a big one. And Tony Robbins talks about this a lot. Yep. The 2%. Yep. The 2% club. And that's the reality of it, right? And we we still continuously easily tell ourselves all the time, like, who do we mm -hmm. think we are? That imposter syndrome slides in there. And let's just ask ourselves consistently, why did you start? Mm -hmm. Why did you start? Why is it that, that you're on the path that you're on? Is it because you feel like God's leading you? And if you really are doing something, which you should always consult Christ before you do it, if yeah. God is asking you to do it, God will take you to the finish line. It's not always in our abilities, you know, it's in our obedience. And we have to pay attention to that as we're grinding through. It's not always easy. This chick, she didn't want to do school, okay? She didn't want to do it. She thought it was a great idea in the beginning. And then after a few semesters, she's like, no, like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. But she knew, like, why did I start this? Mm -hmm. Why? What was the reasoning behind it? And as now we come to the finish line, and nobody likes it at the end of a foot race, okay? We're tired. We're wore out. We're broken. We've had enough. We're over it. But as soon as she crosses that finish line, as soon as that's done, everything, that whole why did I start will all make sense. It all comes to us. So don't give up. Whatever your dream is, writing a book, starting a podcast, you know, meeting a new friend, joining a new community, you know, ask yourself, why did I start doing this? And then do it. Yeah. And the biggest thing that you can do, though, and if you're being really honest with yourself, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're around someone and someone does something like they start school or they start a podcast and your first response internally is like, who do they think they are? <laughs> then you probably have a dream or something that you've snuffed out from your own imposter syndrome. So and you're a little jealous that they're actually starting. And if you just start and are doing your own thing and going out you actually are cheering on everybody else because you're not jealous. You're not worried about it. You're not worried about someone taking your space. You're on fire for what God has for you. And so you are willing to cheer on other people. You are willing to share their page. You are willing to talk about them, have them on your podcast. We have other podcast people on our podcast because we're not worrying about it. Like no. we do, we're doing what God wants us to do. And if someone else is doing what God wants them to do, we should be happy about that. Yeah. We should want to talk about that. We should want to encourage one another. Yeah. So a lot of it is because when we're not doing, we're jealous. And that is a hard, hard truth. And that's something in my life that I've really had to work on because uh, to realize. And as soon as I start taking action, I find that I'm not jealous anymore because I'm taking action. Yeah. But that's where journaling in the morning, praying with God, really, really being focused, hyper-focused. Like what's one or two things I can do today to get me closer to my goal? What do you need from me, God? How can I make an impact for you, God? What do I need to do? That's when that really comes into play too. You, your personal relationship with God and journaling about it and talking about it and listening to him. It's, it's highly important. If you've made it this far, Okay, well, I'm going to ask you to maybe step out of your comfort zone. Share something in the comments. Mm. Maybe why did you start? What is it that you're doing right now? Maybe you haven't started it yet. Maybe you're looking for something to just encourage you to get started. You know, share it with us. Share it. Put it in the comments. What is we'll it? We'll encourage you. I want to encourage yeah. you. Yeah. I want to. You've been so encouraging to us. I want to be encouraging back. You know, we need to have encouragement in our lives. Like, you know, I don't care if you're five foot five and you want to be in the NBA. There was a guy named Spud Webb. He did do that. So it's not about our abilities. It's just not. If God planted an amazing, amazing dream in your heart of something that you really are having a hard time with, let's find encouragement with each other. That's what we're here for. You know, we want to encourage you to step out, find your why, and then and then keep always asking, why am I doing this? I'm going to keep doing it. Why am I doing it? I'm going to keep doing it. So share it with us. You Look know? at Rudy. Sure to Rudy. Yeah. And that's Rudy, a true Rudy. story. Yeah, it is a true story. And radio. And radio. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, but stories like that are 
feel really rare and they're actually a lot more common. We just don't get to hear the stories. You know, there's so many people that I hear all the time that says, well, I can't share my testimony because I really, you know, God really, you know, my life isn't that interesting. Oh, your life's interesting. God has done some miracles in your life. If you have made it this far, uh, you've had some amazing things happen in your life. And God wants to do so much more than what you think that you're capable of doing. Especially if you're in your 40s and or older. Yeah. We're part of the old crowd now. I'm sorry. You had to shovel the driveway today. I shoveled some of the driveway today. Thank you that we had a neighbor come over and help snowplow. But I did shovel some of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling it. Okay. 45. It's rough. Rough. I wouldn't have been able to get out. Thank God for my nice husband. Okay, I know we're going off on a little rabbit trail here, but I had to wake him up this morning because I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna get out, and I have to go to work. Like, I have to go pick someone up, take them to a shift. Like, I I had to go, and he gets right up and comes out and helps me. So look what Tessa just said. She goes, I just had a friend reach out to me today to ask me about joining her in life coaching for medical workers than you guys with this podcast today. God is moving in me. That yes. is incredible. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Okay. This is such a need. The The world needs more coaches. They need more people to say, Hey, in a specific name. Yes. Too. That's what I'm saying. Yes. That is so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Listen, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. God is placing this in your path for a purpose. And imagine a year from now, just imagine a year from now, if you stepped up to this calling of what God's asking you to do, where you could be and what type of difference you could be making in someone else's life for Christ. Like that is awesome. So, and that and that is where awesome. the community, you sharing it will start having you try to hold yourself more accountable because you've talked about it now and you've shared it and you getting a community of people around you to help you encourage. Because, you know, I really hate the quote that says, you know, when you have a purpose in life, you don't need motivation to get up early in the morning. Your motivation pulls you. That is stupid because you're not always, you're human and you're not always going to be motivated. No matter how on fire you are for a purpose, purpose, you're going to get burned out. You're going to get tired. Yep. And that's when the people that are around you to encourage you pull you in that time. Mm. So you're going up and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're just like, I can't do it. I just can't do it anymore. People are like, no, we're doing it. And they're they're pulling you with them in that time. So Yeah, so Casey shared this, right? And Casey, Christy has told me about this. Yeah, and I is. think this is amazing because, you know, the world needs more strong women, like leader type of women, you know? And, and it's Casey amazing is. that you are stepping up to this because, you know, when we start to, no matter how old we are, once we start to follow that calling, what God's asking us to do, and we're stepping up in areas that we don't feel qualified for, that's when real change in other people's lives really start to happen. So congratulations on that. That is incredible. That is so awesome. Yeah, I do. I, I, told, so I tell awesome. them all about it every time I come home. Yes. Carrie Neelis, uh, let's see here. What did she say? Success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Yes, Winston Churchill. Just keep trying. Just yeah. keep doing it all. To the glory of God. Yes, like Carrie. That. that is. And that's some of the hardest things to do. Christy tells me all the time. She's like, it's it's amazing how you don't get, you know, you don't get feel like you're defeated, you know. And I do get defeated. But I also have a really strong community of people. And I do have an incredible wife. Like, she is by far my largest cheerleader, you know, and no matter what it is that I'm doing. And so, you know, that's why we talk about community so important. But yes, Carrie is spot on when she says that so much. Me too. And we want to do it off Christian beliefs. And that's the thing, right? We don't have to shove Christianity down people's throats. We have to be the example. And when we follow this calling mm. and whatever it is, like everybody thinks, you know, you have to work in a church to do ministry. No. Ministry is how you live your life. No matter what it is, I don't care if you open a pizzeria, if you're doing it with, with the solid uh, foundations of Christ and you're, you're proclaiming that as you do your work, that is ministry. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't allow the world to tell you differently and don't allow a church to make you feel different about that either. Your life is ministry and how God uses you is really, really important. So mm -hmm. I love that, that everyone's sharing this stuff. Yeah, it's I do so too. It's so awesome, you know? I love it. I, just, I love it. Read yeah. the Traveler's Gift. Oh my gosh, that book is incredible. <laughs> the Traveler's Gift. It is a really, really, really good book. I mean, it's extremely like off the womp now. Okay, <laughs> Mark's like, I want pizza now. <laughs> yeah, keto pizza, Mark. Stick to the plan, brother. Okay, stick to the plan. Hey, we really want to thank everybody for being here. One year, I cannot believe one it's year! been. I cannot believe it's been one year. Uh, it's amazing. You know, uh, Christy and I are just so in love with just being able to just uh, share what God's doing in our lives. Be and a couple be able, of fire. Yeah. And, and then be able to interact with you guys as well. It's such an honor. And, um, you know, like Carrie said, all the glory 
to God. You know, we would nothing would be possible without him. And as long as we keep honoring him, we'll continue to be able to keep doing the things that uh, that he asks us to do. And that's awesome. And everybody that shared something today that they are passionate about and wanting to start. I want when Casey, when you're finished, mm -hmm. we can have you on the podcast to talk about your journey. Someone that just shared about the medical wanting when you start, when you really start it, we can have you on the podcast. Yes. So you can be a testimony to someone else. Sarah, when you start, let's have you on the podcast. So you, we can be encouraging one another and we can spread the message for other people to just start, yes. just do what God put on your heart. So be prepared for that and reach out to us when you, the two of you start. And then Casey, when you're done, like that we want, if you're willing, obviously. And you should be. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you all for that said happy anniversary. That's so awesome of you guys. Yes. We're so thankful. We are so thankful. Amazing community is everything, and we are firm believers in that. So yeah. I want to thank everybody for being here. Hey, and we'll have some special guests next week. So you want to tune in next week at 7 for our uh, for an interview that we have going, and we haven't done one in a while, so it's pretty no, exciting. Yeah, so we'll see you guys next week.